Brexit, voting for the perception of what people thought Trump was, is evidence that more and more people are sick and tired of being dictated to by this system of control. But we need to go to the next stage of this awakening and realise that the political system is not the way to do it. Ceasing en masse to cooperate with our own enslavement is the way to do it. Outside the political nonsense and irrelevance in the governments of the world. Because whether you are left or whether you are right, Barack Obama and Donald Trump are not messiahs of change. They are simply different divides. The first thing virtually that I posted immediately after the referendum result in June when 17.4 million people voted to leave the EU. I said that this was just the beginning, that the political class and the financial class, in effect, and the hidden hand behind them, though most of them don't even realise that, were not going to go quietly. They were not going to let uh, Britain leave the EU without a hell of a fight. And so it's proving. But there are, there are some good things to this and the events of this week. And that is that it is beginning to dawn on ever more people that there is a conspiracy for the few to control and dictate to the many. I've been pointing this out and providing fine detail for over a quarter of a century, taken endless ridicule and dismissal um, as a result and untold abuse. And so it was nice to read in the Daily Mail today in a comment uh, column the following. The truth is that this judgment, which I'll come to shortly to um, throw a spanner in the works of Brexit, plays with fire, fanning the feeling, not just in Britain and Europe, but also among Donald Trump's supporters in America, that Western public life is becoming a conspiracy. The word is being used in the mainstream. I thought there were only theories. Is becoming a conspiracy of tightly knit, self-serving establishment elites against the public. Well, the, the only thing wrong with that is it's not becoming. It always has been. The fact is that it's now becoming so blatant that it's becoming more and more obvious to everyone. Well, everyone with a brain on active duty. And what that judgment is referring to there is a legal challenge this week to the British government's right to trigger something called Article 50 to start the process of withdrawing Britain legally from the um, the, the web of deceit, mendacity and manipulation that we call the European Union. 17.4 million people voted to leave the EU in June. That is the biggest vote for a political party or a proposition in British history. And the British Parliament voted to have that referendum by a margin of six to one. Why? 
because although there is a, a very significant majority of people in Parliament, in both the House of Commons, the elected and the unelected House of Lords, um, in favour of staying in the EU, they pretty much uh, convinced themselves that having a referendum would not be a problem because, of course, the, the great unwashed would just vote to stay in. Well, we didn't. And that provided this massive shock to the political establishment. Now, having given the public a referendum to decide whether to stay in the EU, and then um, having them vote um, in such massive numbers uh, to come out, it is simply the government's job now to do the will of the people and to trigger Article 50 and start the process, apparently it's going to take about two years, um, to get Britain out of the stranglehold of the EU, to take back uh, power to make our own laws, to um, not be dictated to by unelected dark suit bureaucrats in Brussels that no one's ever heard of. But, like I say, it was never going to be easy because the political class um, that thinks it's um, all-knowing, when it is deeply ignorant, those who are not among the few who are knowingly manipulating um, events, they are um, awash with ignorance, with uh, mendacity, and with the arrogance that they know best, and therefore the will of the people doesn't really matter. Unless, of course, it corresponds with what they think is what should be done, and then, oh, they're all for democracy then. The British Prime Minister, Theresa May, at least in the words she spoke, was committed to triggering um, Article 50 early uh, next year. Brexit means Brexit, she said. The will of the people must be um, followed, adhered to, respected. But uh, this week, there was a legal challenge in the High Court in London, uh, led by a uh, millionaire um, city uh, of London uh, fund manager called Gina Miller and a few others I'll come to, um, to block the triggering by the government of Article 50 without um, a vote in Parliament. And, of course, what uh, Ms Miller uh, uh, said, that she was doing this to protect parliamentary democracy. Uh, yeah, OK. Um, that actually is not what it's about. You see, there's a, there's a majority in the Houses of Parliament that does not want Britain to leave the EU. So by um, taking it back there and having the, um, the uh, members of Parliament and unelected uh, House of Lords decide what will and will not happen with regard to Brexit, despite 17.4 million people voting to come out and the majority in the referendum. Um, that means that we are now in a situation, unless the government wins its appeal, where a majority of members of parliament who want to stay in the EU now have enormous control over where Brexit goes from here. They can um, block it, they can delay it, they can water it down to the point where it's not Brexit at all, but just membership of the European Union under another name. And ideally, what they want to do 
is to bring about um, another second referendum. This is what happens when you go against the EU in a referendum. You've seen it all over Europe. Um, they then have another referendum and they overturn the result of the first referendum, which they didn't like. And um, so now um, the will of the people in the referendum is now being usurped by um, Parliament uh, and members of Parliament. And it is um, a situation that is frankly outrageous, disgusting, despicable, but in some ways a positive thing because it is showing people in their face that the financial and political class couldn't give a damn about what they want. Because this country, like every other country, is not run for the people. It's run for the political and financial classes. And like I keep saying, the hidden hand networks that work through those classes. So we're um, asked to believe uh, by this Gina Miller, who is um, a city fund manager and um, married to uh, a city slicker um, who's even got a, a well-known nickname in the city as um, Mr. Hedge Fund. And they uh, apparently run a uh, uh, an investment operation which according to reports has portfolios worth around a hundred million pounds so they're regular people just like the rest of us and she asks us to believe that this legal challenge um, to the government's right to trigger Brexit without a parliamentary vote is about process it's not about politics. It's about politics, Gina, isn't it? And you know it. Here we have um, a lady who says that she was so horrified by the uh, Brexit vote that it made her, quote, physically sick. So here we're being asked to believe that someone so vehemently um, in favour of staying in the EU has simply um, thrown this spanner in the works of uh, the Brexit process simply because she believes in parliamentary democracy and she wants to protect it. That, Gina would be the parliamentary democracy that your uh, fantastic, um, what could be wrong with it, EU, has spent the last more than 40 years destroying, with more and more laws being um, made by dark suit bureaucrats outside of this country, never mind outside of Parliament. This is the EU that is a, a bureaucratic tyranny taking away and deleting year on year on year the right of sovereign parliaments to make decisions about what happens in their country. But you, uh, a supporter of the European Union in the extreme, and all that, I've only um, done this to throw the Brexit process into turmoil because you believe in parliamentary democracy. They really do think we're all freaking idiots. But as they found in the referendum, we ain't. Um, this is a quote from Gina Miller, um, who's only doing it to protect the process. I felt physically sick, she said, 
when the referendum result came through. Because I thought, I don't think people know the ramifications of this of what's happened, and I felt really sorry that people had been tricked and fooled. You see, the financial and political classes, they know best, you see. So if you are just a, an ordinary person, just one of the great unwashed, then um, you really don't know anything about anything. You haven't worked out that um, Britain has lost control um, of, of its own country to the European Union. You haven't worked out all the um, European laws and regulations that are dictating, uh, uh, the, 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 like I say, the fine detail of your life and what you can do and can't do. You haven't worked out that, that, um, that smaller companies are being crushed by the weight of EU regulation that's destroying their ability to function. You can't work that out. You have to leave it to those who know best the city financiers and the politicians. You're just, you're just the man in the street. The woman in the street. What do you know? She goes on. Uh, we must not underestimate or forget the anger in Europe. Oh, really, I'm terrified. About our vote. They're very angry that we've had this relationship, yet we still threaten the union. Well, they should be angry then. Actually, there's a, a, a vast number of people in other European countries that want to do the same that Britain did and vote to come out. They're not being given the chance because the political class that knows best is terrified that they might do the same. It's extraordinary. Now, let's have a look at these other people who were behind this um, legal challenge, in which um, judges uh, decided that uh, it had to go to Parliament for a vote before Article 50 could be triggered and could not just be done by the government carrying out the will of the people. Um, the organisation behind this, or one of them, is called People's Challenge. Who are these people? Um, it was set up in the summer by a guy called Graham Pigney, uh, a British expatriate. He now lives in France. And Paul Cartwright, who is a Gibraltar national and uh, works as uh, an environmental officer for the Gibraltar government. Was, was Gibraltar in England or Scotland or Wales? Uh, Northern Ireland the last time we were alive I, I don't believe it was Mr Pigney originally from Fairham in Hampshire is a semi-retired uh, man and has lived in a wine growing region of Carcassonne for 19 years so the, one of the people behind this doesn't even live in the country and has lived in France for 19 years um, and he wants to um, in effect that, that's, that, that's, let's be but he open and sensible about it. What's to block Brexit? That's what this is really all about. No, it's the process. Anyway, also backing this legal action um, that won this uh, ruling this week uh, is an organisation called Fair Deal for Expats Group. Well, expats. So they don't live in England either, or Britain. No. Uh, it includes among them dozens of Britons living abroad. Oh, anyone notice a the theme here? Um, and these include a British company director who lives in France, seems to be a popular place, um, a businessman who runs holiday rentals uh, in um, Italy, and an English language teacher in Hamburg, Germany. I never saw Britain get a mention there. Mr. Pigney defended his decision to launch People's Challenge. He said, I happen to live in uh, France, but that is inconsequential inconse in the context of the constitutional crisis we are facing. The constitutional crisis that your challenge has just massively uh, added to, by the way. And it's not inconsequential. Um, he, he says here, what's at stake is nothing less than parliamentary sovereignty. We need to make sure we do not hand the sovereignty of the UK to a self-appointed government. Well, 
What do you mean the sovereignty that's being handed to, to uh, in effect, self-appointed bureaucrats for the last 40 odd years? And of course, it's not inconsequential that someone who starts a legal challenge affecting uh, uh, the uh, vote of 17.4 million people actually has lived in another country for 19 years. Uh, another guy um, in this uh, group um, is, a, is, is a Brazilian-born hairdresser who no one seems to know um, much about. And that is the organisation with their 12 barristers, obviously money no object there, who have um, created a situation where the anti-EU majority or the anti-leave-the-EU uh, majority in Parliament now potentially, unless this government um, appeal is successful, now have um, enormous control over the Brexit process, how fast it moves, uh, the nature of what it is, etc. And that's the whole point of what has happened here. And um, the judgment um, was made by uh, three judges, um, including uh, one, the Lord Chief Justice, who actually is a co-founder of an organisation dedicated to integrating um, laws um, all over Europe into uh, one EU uh, uh, group of laws that are basically all the same. In other words, centralising control in Europe via the legal system. And, you know, in the last uh, 24 hours, day or two, since this judgment was made, um, we have, uh, we have seen so many extraordinarily ludicrous things said, like, it's just about the process, not politics. Um, and another one is, um, I saw, that the judgment was made by an independent judiciary uh, acting above politics and outside politics. You know, you know, you know the, 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 the greatest threat to humankind it's frickin' naivety. The idea that the judiciary is above politics and the judiciary is independent is absolutely ludicrous. Like I say, what it's really about is blocking Brexit um, or watering it down to the point where it ain't Brexit at all. And that's Beyond all the bullshit, that's exactly what this is about. And it's, it's sickening to me anyway to see this group who call themselves progressives, a word that came out of America, basically those of, of the left and greens and all these people, people call themselves liberals, um, to see them lining up alongside and cheering when when they came out of the High Court um, the um, city uh, millionaires and lining up alongside the financial and political class uh, in demanding in effect that the will of the people is not adhered to and we stay in the EU. Here we have these so-called, because that's what they are, so-called progressives, who um, will go on marches and protest against the extremes of the financial class and the political class that they don't agree with, or that part of the political class they don't agree with, while um, they now stand alongside of them uh, to defend democracy by destroying it. They stand alongside people like Tony Blair, a man who so loves parliamentary democracy that he lied to Parliament to justify a catastrophic war that has cost the lives of uh, millions of people 
um, both uh, in Iraq and as a result of what that invasion of Iraq has done since in terms of the Middle East. A man who didn't even keep his own cabinet informed of what was going on in relation to the invasion of Iraq. These progressives, the British equivalent of the bullshitter uh, in the United States, the classic fake progressive Michael Moore, are now standing shoulder to shoulder with people like Tony Blair. It is absolutely pathetic. And um, we're seeing, see, we are in a, 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 a point now where things are coming to the surface, where we can't ignore them anymore. This is why you've got that quote from the Daily Mail using the word conspiracy of the political class against the people. It's becoming blatant. Look at the Clinton emails, how they've shown the collusion with the media, how they collude to uh, um, block the candidates like Bernie Sanders that they don't want. How um, behind the scenes they're saying exactly the opposite to what they're saying in public. And how the whole system is so deeply, shockingly, unspeakably corrupt. And now we're having this put in our face again in Britain. The political class and that which was behind the political class, which, like I say, most of the political class doesn't even know that hidden hand exists. While it does its bidding, just like the progressives, global warming, um, political correctness, stay in the EU, these are all uh, desires of the hidden hand, which the progressives play out, thinking they're being progressive. It's hilarious if he wants a tragic. Um, you know, we've reached the point now where we, the people, have got to say enough. We've got to stop cooperating with this system of corrupt, mendacious control and stop handing our power to it. They have the power to dictate our lives because we give that power to them. How can their number dictate to millions of people, globally billions of people? They can't unless those millions and billions give their power away to them. We've got to stop it. Because it's becoming more blatant and therefore more obvious because it's becoming more extreme. And um, the naivety of people, like I say, um, is extraordinary, um, as we're seeing this week. Um, I saw uh, this post, it's just an example of endless ones on social media just after this uh, judgment was made, from a guy called Martin Cuff, whoever he is. Um, One day, we'll thank Gina Miller for saving the entire notion of British parliamentary democracy, he says. The British parliamentary democracy and sovereignty that has been systematically destroyed by the EU which this lady clearly is desperate for us to stay in. And um, just before this vote, I read this story. Um, It's about a guy called David Attenborough, famous uh, filmmaker on nature. Uh, And he's uh, part of the BBC establishment, which is very pro-EU. Um, which is part of the political establishment, the financial establishment. They're just dog masks on the same face. And um, this, is, this is what the story said. David Attenborough risked enraging millions by claiming the public is not wise enough to have uh, been given a say on Brexit. Note, note that theme. 
the public is not wise enough. We are the political classes. Only we know what's best. Could have been Gina Miller. The TV naturalist said the vote from 17.4 million British citizens to leave the EU had created a mess. Um, actually, it wasn't. But it, it's more of one now. Thanks to the political class. Um, and argued that the decision should have been left to MPs to vote on our behalf. Oh, David. I must send him the, uh, the link to Naivety Anonymous. These were the people that voted to, to have a war in Iraq. These are the people that have made catastrophic decisions um, in, in relation to giving power away to the EU, uh, that, that um, have made catastrophic decisions right across the board that have damaged um, life in Britain. Critics accuse the 90-year-old of being elitist. No, never, surely and failing to recognise what the people want. But that doesn't matter. You're the great unwashed. You just do what we say. Pat you on the head when you agree with us. Smack you on the head when you don't. Referring to Donald Trump's rise in the US, Sir David said, there's confusion, isn't there? Well, I, I suspect that David Attenborough is rather often confused myself. Uh, there's confusion, isn't there, between populism and parliamentary democracy. I mean, that's why we're in the mess we are with Brexit, is it not? No. Do we really want to live by this kind of referendum? When it's fundamental to, to people's lives, yes. And he added, what we mean by parliamentary democracy is surely that we find someone we respect. Well, that's going to be bloody hard when it comes to MPs, isn't it? That we find someone that we respect, that we think is probably wiser than, uh, than we are. Well, that's even more difficult. What's the man talking about? But this, this is the mindset of the political, financial and media establishment. Um... um we think is probably wiser than we are, who is prepared to take the responsibility of pondering difficult things and then trust him or her to vote on our behalf. And a few people can't control the world. It's a piece of cake. What kind of society jails people for having another version of history, another opinion of history, another view of history. I mean, just ponder on that. You have a different version of history, so, so it's a criminal offence. Think about it. We accept these things. I question them. That makes you anti-Semitic, apparently. In their fevered minds. Uh, but this is the best one, this Rathji person. Uh, quote, um, Rathji also argued that the reptilian theory is no more than a dog whistle for the anti-Semitic. Really? People, he said, know how to decode the code about the reptilians. So when I'm writing books decade after decade about um, a non-human force in other dimensions of reality that take a reptilian form, that are manipulating human society from what is to humans unseen, which is almost the entirety of existence. And when I'm talking about... Um, ancient accounts of this, modern accounts of this. Uh, when I'm um, dealing literally, quite demonstrably, literally, in terms of um, non-human reptilian entities, somehow that is code for Jewish people. 
evidence? Zilch. They don't need evidence. All you do is rent up venues, bombard them with uh, lies, innuendo, and then they pull the event. It's ever so simple. People think free speech, or oh, it's a pillar of free society. No, it's not. It's gone like that. It's going like that every day. Um, people um, know how to decode the code about reptilians. Really? Well, they don't. Because it's literal, I'm talking. Whether I means it or not, that doesn't change that fact. So, whether I am really meaning reptilians or whether I'm using it as a code doesn't matter. It's still a code. It seems uh, ridiculous, this uh, Raji uh, says. But the conclusion that Ike draws, wait for this one. This is a, this is, this is a, a, he never said that. But the conclusion that Ike draws is that because he thinks the reptilians are pulling the strings behind the scenes, therefore the Holocaust didn't happen, that's anti-Semitism. So, because I'm saying reptilians are manipulating human society, not only reptilians, many other different expressions of non-human life, uh, then... I am, by definition, by saying that, saying the Holocaust didn't happen. Now, it's worth just considering the uh, extraordinary fact that this is the mentality that is seeking to delete the rights of people both to speak their truth and for others to choose to hear it. And unless we start to focus everybody, even those that don't think they're affected by it, because they will be eventually, if we don't start to focus on this speed with which the basic human right of freedom of expression is being deleted, then before most people realise, it will not only be uh, affecting them, but there'll be no freedom of expression left. Only the right to have views and express views within the parameters dictated by the state, we're already moving in that direction incessantly and of course to control a population or mass you have to control the way they think the way they perceive everything including world events and so to do that most effectively you have to control the information they receive from which those perceptions are formed. And so you don't just need a mainstream media banging out 24-7 the version of everything that you want the target population to believe. You also need to block any other information that is challenging that narrative and thus we have this attack uh, through this fake news label on the alternative media but it's much deeper and goes much further than that if you said to most Germans do you live in a free country they would probably reply, yes, few reservations, but yeah, really. Well, they don't. For many reasons. One of which is that I've been talking around the world 
in country after country, literally all over the world, since the summer of 2016 and endless times before that over the years, uh, with no problem. No problem for a very long time. And yet, I cannot speak in Germany. I'm effectively banned from Germany. I can talk in other EU countries. No problem. But Germany? No. Because when we book venues, either the booking is not taken, or, and this has happened many times now, the venue says, yeah, no problem. And then, shortly afterwards, says, actually, there is a problem. And what's happened is uh, a group of people who are so stunningly arrogant that they believe they have the right to control what people hear. Uh, contact the venue, tell them a pack of lies about me and what I'm going to say at the event. All provable lies because I've been talking for months and months and months. People know what I'm going to say. And as a result of relatively minor pressure and extraordinary levels of mendacity, the venues just pull. And the latest effort was to speak in Berlin um, in October. And my son Jamie, who organises them, flew out to Berlin, met the venue owners, it's a hotel chain, and contract was agreed and flew back everything fine and then we hear not from the venue by the way from um, a media report that it's been pulled uh, this is the report lizard conspiracist David Icke not wanted in Berlin well before they've got into the text, the, uh, the headline is incredibly misleading because thousands of people, uh, many thousands of people, um, would like to hear what I've got to say in Germany. The ones that don't want me are those that don't want those people to hear what I've got to say. So, I'm not wanted in Berlin. No, I'm not wanted by those who believe that they have the right to dictate what people are allowed to say and who is allowed to hear it. Now, in any other circumstances, what I've just said would constitute a tyranny. Some might call it communism, some might call it fascism, whatever name you give to it, it's a tyranny dictating what people can and cannot hear and destroying this basic human right of freedom of speech. And um, the report goes on, uh, the Maritim Hotel in Berlin has confirmed that it does not want to host the live event planned in October 2017, uh, for me. Unfortunately, said a, a, a spokeswoman, at the time of the request, we were not aware that David Icke would participate in the event. We only found out later. Now that provable fact is an absolute lie. Um, this is um, a media pack for... Um, venues that uh, was sent to these people who didn't know what they were agreeing to. Um, it has uh, my picture on. Um, it has some of my background and the opening words to the text are David Icke. So I can completely understand, therefore, why 
they had no idea that it was me. It's a joke. Um, and, you know, you have to pinch yourself. Ooh, ouch, yes, it is true. Um, to believe it. So, even more outrageous, this hotel chain that's told the media that they're not going to have the event they have agreed to and knew what it was, though saying it, they don't, has not, a week later now, told us the venue is, <laughs> is not um, going to allow the event to go ahead. And when uh, Jamie tries to contact them to say, look, we've seen this media report, what's going on, and you're quoted in it, they won't take his calls. And this is supposed to be a, a major hotel chain in Germany. What's it called again? Maritim. And that's how they behave. But this gets uh, even more farcical as we go on. Um, this report says the Maritim declined to give a reason for the cancellation. I'll give you a reason. Um, people contacted them, that contacted all these other venues, lied through their teeth about what I was going to say and what I believe. And um, they then said, oh, we're not having that because, you see, standing up for freedom of speech uh, is not something most people are prepared to do. Uh, what they're looking for is how does this affect me instead of how does this affect freedom? And so they pull, a number of them of Paul. Uh, they must be in a club. Uh, what, what do they call it? The, the, the Jelly Spine Club might be appropriate. Uh, but this article does uh, quote um, another venue who agreed to the event, no problem, and then Paul, something called the Carl Benz Arena in Stuttgart, um, who they quote as saying that it held to the values of the German basic law which also includes the right to free speech. That's how they all start. Well, most of them. But then comes the but. There's always a but. Because we believe in freedom of speech. Can't be against it. That's not very good, does it? We believe in freedom of speech. But. And there's a but here. Um, it includes the right to free speech. But... Of course, only as long as this conforms to the democratic principles of our society. Anyone that's heard me speak on this worldwide wake up tour, who's listening to this, will be now having their jaw somewhere down here and a bewildered look on their face, thinking, how on earth does anything he says go against democratic principles of our society, when indeed I am calling for more freedom, more, if you like, democracy, because the, what democracy is supposed to stand for is being deleted day after day after day. So I'm actually calling for more, if you like, democratic values, but they won't let me speak because of um, not conforming to democratic principles. <laughs> it gets funnier. Stick with me. Um, so, um, the, this report goes on. Many critics have noted that Ike uses anti-Semitic arguments and imagery. Name them. Name them. Name that from my talks on this talk. No, they just throw it out. And that's a, a, a line that the media use all the time. Many critics have noted. Oh, really? Who? People with a vested interest. What about the ones who haven't? And then, I mean, this is the next line. Like many racist conspiracy theorists, if you look at a video uh, 
the cast that I did very recently um, about trying to shut me up. Um, you'll hear sections from the, the talk where I'm saying, actually, that racism is ridiculous. And um, one of the quotes when I'm talking about the nature of reality that I use is if the nucleus of an atom, which bodies are supposed to be made of, were the size of a peanut, the atom would be about the size of a baseball stadium. If we lost all the dead space inside our atoms, we would each be able to fit into a particle of dust and the entire human race would fit into the volume of a sugar cube. What I'm saying is race is a nonsense. Ah, but as is the physical body, it doesn't actually exist. It's a hologram. Um, but when you're saying race is a nonsense, you are like many racist conspiracy theorists. When you're absolutely obsessed with race and see it everywhere then you're anti-racist anyway this report then quotes someone called Jan Rathji of this organization a NGO it's described as that tracks racism in Germany. Oh, really, are we getting down to what's going on then? Uh, he welcomed the um, cancellation of the German events. Oh, you welcome free speech being deleted, do you? And you welcome um, preventing people that want to hear what I've got to say, hearing what I've got to say. Oh, let's have a round of applause. That's brilliant, that. Just the kind of society we want to live in. Uh, but but what about what about you, Jan? Are you able to say what you want? Oh, of course. And you'll be screaming and squealing at anyone suggesting that you shouldn't. Uh, David Icke, says this person, has a lot of influence on the conspiracy ideological scene. See, drop the ideological in. Um, when actually... It's challenging ideology. <sighs> anyway, especially, uh, says this person, through the anti-Semitism he spreads. Where in these talks am I doing that? It's ridiculous. See that other video from about two or three weeks ago. Um, and, and the arrogance of this... Um, through an anti-Semitism he spreads, which appeals to people in Germany because it offers some relief from the guilt of German crimes against humanity in the Holocaust. How do you feel about that, people of Germany? Eh? How do you feel about that, anyone that wants to hear what I've got to say? The arrogance of it is truly, truly extraordinary. Well, anyone who studies dictatorships, tyrannies, will know one thing. One of the greatest, indeed, the foundation of tyranny is dividing and ruling the target population. And now look around the world. You've got America divided and ruled over the clashes between Trump supporters and uh, so-called progressives. Uh, you have the um, divide and rule going on in Britain over Brexit and you have the divide and rule going on across Europe with regard to um, the scale of immigration. Uh, does anyone think this is all an accident? That it's all happening by chance? By random events when when you do the research the same characters keep coming up across all of those things and more that are dividing and ruling the global population and thus allowing the few not just to control but to continually direct the lives in terms of where the world is going of billions of people. 
So today I'm going to talk about Trump, progressives, Zionist billionaires, fake news, and the, um, the state of the alternative media. And all those things are part of a, a coherent whole when you see how the dots connect. Now, um, Donald Trump, he was elected not because of what he is and not because of what he'll do, but because of a public perception, at least among a great number of Americans, a public perception of what he is and what he will do. And, um, well, reality is dawning already. He's gone back on prosecuting uh, Hillary Clinton for extraordinary levels of criminal activity and corruption and much more. He's going back on climate change being a hoax. Uh, he's... Uh, uh, condemned the so-called alt-right uh, media that essentially got him elected. And um, he's uh, going back on his Muslim ban. And he is apparently going to produce an economic package. Sits back in amazement, can't believe it struggling with a shock that will benefit the very rich and make them very much richer. He really has only one um, area left already. I mean, he's not even in office yet where he can produce what he said he would do. And that is not to appoint um, heads of defence and Secretary of State from a pool of people apparently being considered that are warmongering, let's go to war with Russia, let's continue business as usual in terms of overseas imposition of American will through military means. We, we can only hope that he will be, even him, though it must take, some, it must take something, that even him um, will be too embarrassed to appoint those sort of people um, to the Defence Department and the State Department after what he uh, has said about improving relations with Russia and um, not wanting to um, have uh, the regime change of President Assad in uh, Syria as uh, a non-negotiable must be, which is fundamental to bringing an end to that US, UK, NATO members manipulated catastrophe, which is masquerading as a people's revolution in Syria. And um, interesting that uh, Trump uh, has uh, already uh, spoken out against the so-called alt-right. And you know, um, <laughs> will people never learn? What politicians do and con men and liars, sorry I repeat myself, is they tell they are their electorate that which they have to get to vote for them, They're that part of society that will uh, vote for them, never mind the ones that won't. They have to tell that uh, potential support what it wants to hear. And if Trump was going to get elected, he had to get this increasingly uh, um, vast uh, 
number of people, massively uh, increasing number of people, who get their um, information overwhelmingly through what's become known as the alternative media. People who are sick of being lied to by the, uh, the mainstream decade after decade after decade. And so what Trump did is told them what they wanted to hear. So it was um, the climate change hoax, it was uh, um, going for the economic system um, and um, sorting out the Federal Reserve and, and all these things that um, people in the alternative media uh, want to hear. But now, of course, reality is dawning because he's going back on one after the other. And uh, if he goes back, uh, we, we hope he won't. We hope he, he, he will be too embarrassed uh, to do it. But if he goes back on um, his pledges for foreign policy and puts war hawks in the key positions, then um, there is, before he comes to power, there is nothing left, basically, of what he said he would do. And it, it's a head shaker for me that um, significant um, um, swathes of the so-called alternative media in the United States uh, should be uh, supporting uh, Trump in the belief that he was going to do what they wanted him to do. And, of course, all we're seeing is a repeat of what happened with Obama and, 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 and the other side of this ludicrous political uh, so-called spectrum. He came in, he was going to be the great new uh, political messiah of change and transformation. He wasn't going to be like George Bush before him. He wasn't going to uh, be a warmonger. He was going to be about fairness and justice and all these things. And uh, of course, you would take it as a gimme that the first black president would be good for black people in America. Didn't work out so well, did it? The why is simple. Um, he was just the first black frontman president for a hidden hand cabal that had uh, used up to this point um, white men, <laughs> front men in the White House. So it was business as usual. But there was a difference, you see, and this is very, very significant in this psychological game that is going on, because it's all, it's all a mind game. Remember during the Bush administration, when he was using the excuse of the um, completely uh, um, internally created 9-11 uh, to justify going into Iraq, etc. Um, there was a very strong um, anti-war movement started to built um, in the United States and it was made up of what people uh, are now calling and call themselves progressives. I'll, I'll get to that later on. Then Obama comes in, the darling, the messiah of the progressives and continues business as usual uh, with what's happened in Libya for instance, what's happened in uh, Syria and the extraordinary levels of death and destruction that his um, policies, in league not least with Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State, um, have um, visited upon the uh, so deeply tragic uh, Middle East. Where's been the anti-war movement in the Obama years? Hmm? Where is it? Nowhere. Why? Because when you put your faith in this Messiah president, this Mr. Progressive president, then uh, well, a number of things happen. First of all, you can't or you don't want to admit to yourself you've been had. And thus, 
what you would condemn Bush for, rightly before, you keep your mouth shut in terms of Obama, even though he's doing the same things. And so what we're seeing now is the same, but at the other polarity. We're having um, the so-called um, alt-right and those parts of the alternative media um, that supported Trump um, already uh, privately, and even some, to be fair, publicly, aghast at the way he's going back on everything. So fast as well, I mean. Oh. Um, anyway, but some are now already defending him for going back on what he said he would do. Why are they defending him? <laughs> for the same reason that the progressives went quiet and the anti-war movement went quiet once Obama came in doing the same things that Bush had done. And um, alt-right. This is the this new phrase for the alternative right-wing media as opposed to the mainstream right-wing media. But, you know, I started out doing what I do now. Basically, before there was an alternative media, there was virtually nothing there. The old radio station here and there. And you had to get this information out through books or by tramping around from place to place, talking to next to nobody, because nobody was really interested in those days. It wasn't an alternative media. Um, and it's worth, and I think it's important now, for the alternative media, or cause itself that, to actually take a breath in the light of current events and just reevaluate what it's there for and, and why it, it, it came into existence in the first place. Because if you, um, if you identify with a political position, whether it's right or left, whether it's Republican or Democrat, whether it's Labour or Conservative, or any, any other these uh, political polarities anywhere in the world, then from where I'm sitting, you are not part of the alternative media. You are just mainstream light, if that in some cases now. The alternative media came into existence originally to point out that the whole right, centre, left political paradigm is a gigantic hoax. It's a hoax because in the shadows, all these different apparently uh, um, alternative political uh, persuasions are actually masks on the same face of a force in the shadows and that's why whether it's a left uh, government or a right government essentially the same things happen and the world goes in the same direction it was to point out that the system is rigged and you will never change anything through the political system because the political system is actually there and structured to stop anything changing for the better of the people. To stop anything changing that stops this incessant direction of the world to, to global fascism from continuing. So there is no such thing as an alt-right, an alternative media um, that calls itself right. Just as there's no such thing as a alternative media that calls itself left or center or progressive or any of it. Because these are all tags and names and labels for basically the same thing in terms of ultimately what's controlling them. And so the alternative media needs to, um, needs to look at itself. The genuine alternative media that is um, exposing 
the way things work rather than taking political positions within the structure of the way things work. And um, it needs to um, make sure that um, it doesn't get pulled into this uh, political nonsense that significant parts of the alternative media have been pulled into. Then there's this thing coming up now more and more and more in the last few days since the Trump election. And it's called fake news. Well, the ironies are not lost. This is the idea that Trump got elected because of fake news from alternative sources um, on the Internet, social media and all this stuff. The irony, <laughs> there are many, but one of the major ones is that the mainstream media is pushing this about fake news, as are the politicians, of course. Um, when, if you want the home of fake news, decade after decade after decade, then just go to the alternative media. Uh, sorry, the, the mainstream media. Um, although the alternative is involved in fake news as well as I'll come to in parts of it. If you... Um, if you look at the, even the, the leaked emails um, in terms of uh, Clinton uh, and the, um, the way the media was working with her to her benefit and to um, manipulate the perceptions of the population, for that same media now to come out and start saying we must in effect start censoring the internet because of fake news. It's, it's, it's extraordinary. Uh, but of course, the genuine alternative media has and continues to make a fantastic contribution to the circulation of information and exposure of the system and that which serves the system in all its forms. Um, which is making an impact upon the political system and on people's awareness of the world as it really is. And so, of course, they want to label things um, in a way that uh, targets the alternative media. So it's all fake news. No, it's not. Actually, it's the best journalism on planet Earth comes from the alternative media. However, as I said um, with a little, what do they call them, Freudian slips, when I said alternative instead of mainstream, um, that actually was very relevant, because it's no good either, the alternative media sticking its nose in the air um, and looking down on the mainstream, and then having very significant swathes of it operating and acting in the same way the mainstream does. Let's not... Um, fall into this black and white trap that the mainstream media is fake news but the alternative media is all, all of it oh no it's the truth no it's not there's a load of old bollocks comes out through what calls itself the alternative media we, ha we, ha we, we have um, websites many websites that call themselves um, alternative media platforms that blatantly put out fake news that they've made up. You, you have um, a situation where you, you, they, they put out a headline designed to make you click on it so that you'll add to their advertising revenue. And when, um, you, um, when you go to the text, having now added to their advertising, the text in absolutely no way justifies the headline. It's called clickbait. That's alternative. Um, there, there's a, a, a one um, website, actually, uh, again, ironically, run by a former webmaster of davidike.com uh, some time ago, um, that not only uh, operates with the, uh, the, the clickbait uh, technique, but actually uses a named writer that doesn't actually exist. And they call themselves alternative. Now, if you want to discredit 
the genuine alternative media that's making and has made such a fantastic contribution to the population's awareness of what's happening and it's not being told about, then all you do is you pick out the fake news people. You pick out the clickbaiters. You pick out people who are using fake writers. And you say that's the alternative media. It's not. But that's the way propaganda works. So it's important that the genuine alternative media doesn't sit around and just let this go unchallenged, but, but constantly highlights to people where these clickbait sites are, where these um, uh, fake news sites are. Uh, and, and, and the alternative media uh, cleans up its own house. And please, those that have supported Trump in the alternative media and taken a political position, please sit down, take a deep breath and have a little look at it. It's about the system, exposing the system, exposing the rigged system, which means it doesn't really matter who comes in in terms of front people, because the system's in control, whoever's there. That's what, that's what we were created to expose. Now, progressives. Progressives. Are, um, th these are people, it's, 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 it's a word used in America, it's being used in Britain and more widely now. Progressives are those, um, you, you, can, you can pretty much recognise them because they have big hearts all the way down their arm on their sleeve I'm so kind and I'm so good look at me, look at what I'm doing I'm such a kind, loving person right, let's um, see, one of the, the, the words that is put together with progressive almost like um, their interchangeable terms is liberal in fact, um, in, in America, uh, it's conservative or it's liberal. It's a Republican or Democrat. So this word liberal is thrown around all the time. In fact, it's thrown around very liberally. Um, so, three definitions. Liberal. Favouring reform, open to new ideas and tolerant of the ideas and behaviour of others not bound by traditional thinking, broad-minded. Well, I mean, that's pretty much the direction I'm coming from. Um, if you want to use the dictionary definition, now progressive, which is supposed to be liberal, but uh, isn't much of it anyway. Progressive, favouring or advocating progress. But who decides what's progress? Change. Improvement. Who decides what's improvement? And reform as opposed to wishing to maintain things as they are, especially in political matters. Well, there's nothing in that definition that, that you could call liberal. It's just wanting change, uh, etc. Now, this is interesting. This is the definition of fascism. A tendency toward or actual exercise of strong autocratic or dictatorial control. Now, when I look at the behaviour of so many people that call themselves progressives, it's that last definition that I see. We have um, people, um, uh, well, it's obviously much of it has been uh, generated and coordinated out of the shadows, but We've had these protests against Trump um, that um, he, he, he shouldn't be present, that um, things should happen to, to, to stop that happening. We've had violence on the streets. And these people call themselves progressives. Yet if Clinton had have won in the same way that Trump did, that would have been to these same people. Um, 
The people have spoken. It's democracy. Instead, we've had these progressives um, holding up um, uh, love uh, Trump's hate banners with fury and hatred on their faces. I mean, anyone got a mirror? Might be helpful. These people are so self-deluded. They don't see that their behaviour mirrors that which they claim to oppose. And so we, we, we're having um, these protests and then we're having um, Clinton supporters, progressives, crying and in need of therapy and stuff because, because a, a woman who, who so believes in the rights of women that she takes millions from the royal family of Saudi Arabia, which you may have noticed has a problem with women's rights, but someone who is one of the most deeply, deeply corrupt people ever to appear in American politics, and my God, think of the competition, has not won the presidency of the United States. Ah! Therapy! Instead of looking at what is wrong and what is behind a system called democracy and politics that offers you a disaster or a catastrophe in terms of Clinton or Trump. And look at some of the people, one of the major people that fund these progressive organisations. George Soros, Zionist oligarch billionaire, Who was, who was someone that put tens of millions into the um, Vote for Trump campaign? Sheldon Adelson, Zionist oligarch, billionaire. Does anyone really think in their terminal naivety that those two people don't ultimately answer to the same? masters. So why would you have massive funding of progressive movements and ma massive funding supporting someone that progressives um, demonize Trump for president? We come back to where we started. Divide and rule. George Soros and his Open Society Foundations and all the networks that go out from them um, was majorly involved in triggering the Arab Spring which was presented by the fake news media as a spontaneous people's revolution in the Arab world. It was just a front to allow um, Western, not least American and British, funded, armed, trained rebels, mercenaries, to um, start a proxy war against targets in the Middle East like Gaddafi and Assad. But they said, oh no, it's a people's revolution. It's just a front for a proxy war. Because if you keep invading countries over and over again, um, openly, like in Iraq, then people are going to go, what's going on? So you, you, you sell it as a people's revolution. Um, and quite a few months ago now, um, there was something in Washington, D.C. called democracy spring, where progressives um, went to Washington to um, protest about uh, billionaires and their influence in politics, uh, as if their um, poster boy, um, Barack Obama, wasn't funded massively to record-breaking um, degrees at the time by the same people. And, another irony, 
a number of the organisations that took part in Democracy uh, Spring are funded by George Soros, a Zionist oligarch, billionaire, who, who does Springs rather well, it seems. What you have is um, people of a certain persuasion, say the right. They get their information from the right-wing press and what's become known as the alt-right. And then you get people of a progressive persuasion and they get their information from the left-wing press or the so-called liberal press, or the progressive press. And just as in politics and political parties, left, right, centre, whoops, controlled by the same people, so are the left-wing press and so are the right-wing press. They're just different masks, once again, on the same face. So all these uh, groups within politics, whether it's the right or progressives or centre, they're all getting their information about the world, basically from the same sources. And the only literal alternative to that is going to the genuine alternative media that's dismantling the system in people's minds by exposing what it is and not taking a left-right position within the, the system of control. And that's why they're targeting the genuine alternative media now through these fake news, anything but alternative websites and through those who've taken a political position in the Trump election. And uh, there's something that's uh, a term that's come to be used more and more now. It's called identity politics. And it's time for all persuasions in the political spectrum and those in the alternative media that are not, in my view, very alternative to grow up and to stop playing this identity political game that's allowing the few to dictate to the many, incessantly, ongoing. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Um, I'm gay, okay, okay, I, I'm gay, not me, but I'm... Um, talking about this um, gay identity. Uh, there's lots of gay people who um, uh, are not like this, but there is a, a gay um, uh, mentality that, that looks at politics from a gay perspective. What, what, what about gays? Because their identity is that they're gay. Then you have um, transgender identity politics, which is all under this progressive wing. Um, and then you have um, Jewish, Muslim, Christian identity uh, politics, which says, um, I, um, I'm, I'm this, this is my label, so I'm going to vote from a position that best suits my identity. It's the politics of me, me, me. Identity politics. First of all, that is a godsend to anyone who wants to divide a rule. But it also means that simple things like what is fair, what is just, what is right by all people just go missing. Questions like that. What is the fair thing to do here? Not what is the best thing to do for my identity and my identity politics. What is the fair thing to do here in this situation? What is the just thing to do in this situation? And there's another part of this identity politics, which is, which is money. What's the, what's the fair thing to do? What's the just thing to do? in terms of the financial system. It's that no one is without a home. No one is hungry. 
And no one is allowed to fall below a certain basic um, level of, of, of life. But what does identity politics do in terms of the finance? It says, which one will make me more money than I already have and I have more than I could, I could spend in a hundred lifetimes? All this identity stuff, all this me, 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 what's in it for me, what will they do for me, has made us lose perspective of those simple things, those simple foundations of making judgments and introducing changes, what is fair, what is just, for all people concerned. And, you know, when I talk about progressives of the left, there are still some genuine people um, there that do come from that perspective and do value things like freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Because when we come back to this definition fascism, liberal and progressive, but particularly when we come back to this this definition of fascism 